Perhaps the simplest data type in all of JavaScript is the humble boolean, but nonetheless it is critical to writing useful programs. So let's take a look. A boolean is a general programming concept and it always has two values. And within JavaScript, these values are represented by the literals lowercase true and lowercase false. Using the JavaScript type of operator on a boolean data type gives back the string boolean, which is of course why we are calling them boolean. We don't normally use a boolean by itself as it often shows up as a result of a comparison operator. For example, here we have a variable called person which we have initialized to John and if we apply the triple equals operator which is called strict equality within JavaScript between a person and the string John, we get back true. Similarly, if we compare it to something else, for example the string Jane, we get back the boolean false. The key use case for a boolean is when it shows up as a result in conditional logic. For example, here we have a person that might be Judy or it might be Kate. If person is going to be Judy, we are going to log to the console, hi J. And if it's going to be Kate, we are going to log, hey K. Right now, we have initialized person to Judy. This means that the triple equal comparison with the string Judy will be true. And similarly, the triple equal comparison with Kate will result in false. The way the if condition works within JavaScript is if the expression provided to if is truthy and of course true is a truthy value, then the block of code contained within if will execute. And similarly, if the expression evaluates to a falsy value and false is a falsy value, then the block of code will be skipped over. And if we execute this code, no surprise, we see hi j. Now if you were to modify the person variable to be Kate and then execute the code again, of course, this time we see hey k. In terms of boolean operators, one that we really need to care about is the exclamation point, which is lovingly called the bang, and when used twice, it is called the double bang. The exclamation point is the negation operator, and it is also called the logical not and the logical complement. Its behavior is quite simple, it takes a true and turns it into a false, and it takes a false and turns it into a true. And you can actually use it twice, and for a boolean, it would have no side effect, so the true will become false and then will become true again, and similarly false will become true and then false back again. But this is great for converting falsy or truthy values of other data types into true boolean true and false. An empty string within JavaScript is a falsy, so applying double bang to it converts it into a true boolean false. And similarly, a non-empty string is actually truthy, so applying double bang to that converts it to a boolean true. Using truthy and falsy values within conditions is normally frowned upon and you really want to use real boolean true and false and using the double bang allows you to convert these into real booleans. We can combine two boolean expressions with the operators double ampersand for and and double pipe for or. Here we have a variable defining a state that can be pending or done and because of some unforeseen circumstances it might end up being something else in which case we want to show an error. So if it is indeed pending, we show valid. If it is done, we show valid. Otherwise, we show unexpected state. Notice the duplication of code between the pending and the done code blocks. Wouldn't it be great if you could combine these both conditions into a single conditional? And that is where the OR operator comes into play. If either of these conditions, state equal to pending or state equal to done are true, then the whole of the condition will turn into true. That is how the boolean OR operator works and it allows us to combine those two conditions into a single conditional block so we don't have to repeat ourselves again and again. The opposite of the boolean OR is the boolean AND operator and unlike OR where either of the conditions being true results in the whole thing be true, with the boolean AND all of the conditions have to be true for the final expression to result to true. Here we have a variable for an HTTP status code which can be between 100 and 599. If it is 200, it is success, but if it is in the range 400 to 500, we want to show an error and to combine the conditions that it must be greater than or equal to 400 and less than or equal to 500, we use the boolean AND. So as an example, right now it is 200, so it will fall down to success, but if it is 404 not found, it is going to lie in the range 400 and 500 and therefore we will log out error. And for any other value, for example 301 moved permanently, it is not 200, it is not in the range 400 to 500 and therefore we log out unexpected status. When you have a variable that is intended to store a boolean value, some developers have very strong feelings about what these variables should be named and specifically how they should be prefixed. Here are a few examples to give you an intuition about the most common prefixes. 
If you want a variable that will be true if the user is logged in, don't call it user logged in because it's confusing if this is a boolean value or an object containing some details about the user that is logged in. Instead prefer the more obviously boolean looking is user logged in. Similarly, if we have a boolean for when the user has access, don't call it access because it looks more like an object and instead prefer has access. If you want a variable to be true if the user can dance, then prefer can dance. Similarly, if you want something to be true if the user should provide an address, use should provide address. Notice how the prefixes are naturally appearing in the comments as well and in terms of the English language, they fall under categories of verbs but personally, I recommend picking it up from whatever sentence you would naturally use to describe these variables. One thing that even I strongly feel about is when variables have negation in their name. As an example, do not name a variable is not allowed. Don't use any negation term like the word not within a variable name. It's going to be perfectly fine and easy to understand when the value is true. For example, something is not allowed. However, when it's going to be false, you are going to need to do a double negative mapping in your brain. Is not allowed is false and therefore something is allowed. Things would be much better if we called a variable is allowed and it's very clear when something is not allowed and when something is allowed and these are the same as the previous conditions which were a bit hard to understand. Now that we've taken a deep look at booleans in isolation, it allows us to safely look at more attributes of the core JavaScript data types. As always, thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next one.